continue talking about that, we'll get started with the draft in the meantime. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Oh, this is going really fast. Um, first ban by and faculty was Illidan. Then the ban by alternate was Abathur. Uh, first pick went to and faculty and first two picks or alternate were Tassada and Uther. Next picks for and faculty Stitches and Felstad. So this is looking uh, pretty much like what we've seen lately, except the ban on Illidan is a little bit surprising, but maybe it's just one of those assassins that and faculty doesn't want to deal with. Um, and the pickup of Chen. And we have the next ban going on for and faculty, which is Nova. Also a little bit surprising on the bans here. But they probably uh, don't want to face uh, a certain combo. But then I would have expected maybe a ban of Tyrael and Nova, because that makes more sense with uh, Judgment and Precision Strike combo. Uh, Illidan and Nova, a little bit weird, but then again, Illidan has a really long range, um, long range takeout. Nova also able to um, to disrupt channeling uh, from a long range. So I think that's probably the reasoning here on Cursed Hollow. You really want to get rid of those. Um, long-range disruptors and they have stitches and felts that maybe I mean it's kind of weird and I've never seen a pro team do it but maybe on cursed hollow it would even make sense like if you can get the pickup on stitches to ban a noob for the opposing team or just grab him himself oh geez <laughs> this is pretty amazing we've seen this combo work uh, quite well already a noob and stitches alongside false that and I mean false that and the noob uh, some amazing synergy the line stun um, the follow-up the shock and awe uh, really really nice and yeah you're right star lady these were the fastest picks ever <laughs> My fuck. okay I'll, I'll try to keep um, keep the bouncing to a minimum but it will happen you you're just gonna notice though uh, during uh, during the picks and bans, so that's all right, I guess. And oh, what a weird ban by alternate, by the way, Malfurion. But no, never mind. Um, in retrospect, it does make sense. Stitches and Malfurion is a nice combo. Um, you can uh, hook in and then get the root in with Malfurion. So banning him makes sense. Of course, the Abathur ban uh, in the first place made a lot of sense for end faculty. And now they go for Tyrael. So that does kind of blow that Nova was banned. So they really need an assassin. They have a, a strong sustain combo right now, or a sustain composition, but they need an assassin uh, and they need one with a high damage output. We don't have Tacit on the opposing team, so they could go for Zero Tool if they want to, but they pick Val. And the final pickup for alternate is Brightwing. Okay, um... Yeah, I guess that, that's an amazing composition for, for alternate. They don't have their... Um, main strength, which would be Abathur. Guccio just loves to play Abathur, but um, he is also pretty good on... Um, I mean, I think his main is Falstad. Um That's what his fans told, at least. So, um... Wait a sec... Um, yeah, his, his main is Falstad, but he also loves to play um, Abathur, uh, Zagara. And I've seen him on Inubarak as well, I think. All right, so I think we're about ready. I just need an invite to the lobby. Do they have a lobby set up? Mm, not yet. Yeah, so I like that combo. Um, with Stitches and Anubarak and Feldstead, I mean, all of these guys are just amazing at disrupting um, the channeling on the tribute. Um, Stitches, of course, you can pull someone out, uh, though I would think that's, that's probably pretty much the last uh, last resort, because you don't want to use your initiation on, um, on, on the pulling ability r right away. Uh, that's probably something for later on. So I think it's going to be mostly Tychus and Anoop, 
that try to get the disrupt off on, on the tribute. Um, and yeah, I mean, an Uberak false set combo or shock and awe and the, the line stun. Let's have a look at end faculty though. Let's see what they can make out of this. Um, I mean, with Uther, Chen, Interior, uh, and Tassada, you have a team that pretty much can stay alive for as long as they want to. Um, Vala, though, is pretty much the only really good damage dealer. I mean, Tassada is up there. Um, he can, you can, um, you can pick talents that he's really strong in it. Um, and a for the lobby. Okay. Um, Maybe not. Mm. Sorry, um, had to talk to the mods or admins rather. That's weird. Uh, Okay, I'll try to get um, get myself in the lobby. But none of the players I have in my friends list are in the lobby yet. Okay. Um, yeah. So they can they can stay alive forever. Um, but as far as damage is concerned, it's it's gonna be tough. Only Vala in there. I mean, Tyrael, um has um, has a good way of just chasing after guys, and Chen. Well, I think Chen is just the survivability master, popping his ultimate just before he dies. But we did see uh, in the in those uh, EG versus Glorious games that that can backfire. Okay, so apparently they had some problems uh, getting a game set up and are working on fixing it. Yeah, so they will will have to play Tassadar and Vala as the main damage dealers, and that uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be tough. Tassadar can um, can use the storm to try to disrupt channeling. Uh, Ufer, of course, but it's not as long ranged. Tyrael can throw a sword. And um, Vala also works, but as far as the um, pickups go, I gotta give it to Alternator. I love their I love their composition for this game. We'll have a look, but it it's really shoppy and not really worth commentating. But we'll have a look. Sorry about this, fellas. It's just gonna be a restream without sound. Um, I'll try to get in the lobby for the next game. I don't know what's. I'm just ignoring that Pavely top. All right. Um, one thing I want to watch out for is how in faculty um, can deal with the uh, disruption on the tributes. Um, okay, first tribute already goes to which team's cursed. Um. Mm. Can't really say. Would assume alternate, but yeah, they're gonna grab the boss here as well, and and faculty just staying in their lanes. So yeah, they are cursed. Uh, Alternate did get the um, did get the first curse, which is kind of surprising, cause uh, which never mind, which isn't, cause Alternate did get all those uh, uh, disrupt heroes with uh, Anubarak and Stitches and Tychus. So just as I expected. Um, sorry, I had I think they had the um, picks and bands m m mixed up previously. Ah, uh, never mind. It's all right. Mm. 
Sorry, I have to check. I'm getting a lot of messages uh, in the Heroes client. And this is shoppy as hell anyway, so... Alright, one fort down already for end faculty, and they're a level behind. Uh, looks like they sent three, oh no, all of their guys here to stop this boss. Uh, the curse is just up, so um, Alternate will use that time to um, put on some more pressure in the mid lane. Uh, looks like they might get that gate there. Why is the stream so laggy? Sorry about that. Um, the uh, um, it's just a restream and um, the caster that the French caster that's streaming it right now um, doesn't have the connection for it as you can see we'll have the real stream up soon <laughs> for the next game at least oh alternate a little bit in trouble stitch is being picked off and green out also zoned out there but he can get away and they take out Tyrael but so far and faculty still in good control uh, Chen is pretty low though and um, he will have to pop his ult but getting <laughs> wow getting an amazing team fight out of this of course it's so shoppy that I can't actually tell you guys all that much um, but nice team fight one for four and now bribing bribing the easy giants there so uh, that's some good pressure coming in. Oh, that, that bribe was actually by um, Feltzad, who was the only one left alive for alternate. So putting in some counter pressure. But that was a good fight uh, for end faculty. Um, just losing Tyrael. And that really goes to show that um, it doesn't really matter for them if they, um, if they lose one of their warriors. Which is kind of surprising. In other compositions, that doesn't really happen. If your warrior goes down, you um, you really get steamrolled usually, unless you play like really cautiously and try to lure them in, and then um, like lure one of their assassins in, for example, for the final blow, and then um, uh, get down on her with a stun or something like that. Okay, next tribute. Should be good for alternate, but and faculty also getting in position. And ooh, the knights are coming up in ten seconds, so they have to make a decision here: um, go for the tribute or go for the knights, or possibly get the tribute first and then go for the knights afterwards. Yeah, sorry, fellas. Sorry for the lags. Um, it's a restream by one of the French casters who was the only one that was in the lobby when they started the game for some reason. Oh. And Faculty jumping on top of Guccio, but he dashes out of there. And and Faculty is in a pretty good position to defend this tribute. And they take out Brightwing. Oh, cornered her there in, in the middle of that um, of that camp. And now Stitches also in trouble. He's getting surrounded by everyone and some nice body blocking coming out of uh, Tassada. And they take out Stitches as well. Felser is also incredibly low. Oh, the storm nearly killed him there. Jeez, and faculty really turning this around. Tesla is pretty low now, and they took out Vala in that exchange. And the tribute is still up. Looks like Tyrael is going for it, so this is going to be the first tribute that goes to in faculty. And they will return to their lanes now. But that's nice. Initial pickup here on the tribute. Oh. And faculty should get out of there, they already took a lot of damage. And alternate, they now have a little bit of time to go for the knights, but they're level behind. Uh, it's not crucial though, both are level 16, so they have their talents up. And we're gonna see a fight here at the night camp. Tyrell did move in. Didn't use Judgment yet, is, if I saw it correctly. But it's gonna be a little bit of a fierce fight here at the knights. Uh, and there is Judgment going on top of Guccio, but he dashes out, and some nice uh, positioning and zoning here by Alternate. Ooh, Tesla comes in from the left, Tyke is already going down on Alternate's part, Material also taken out by in Faculty, doesn't really matter that much. Now a noob goes down, and now uh, one of their warriors gone, I think Alternate is in trouble. Yep, they also lose Brightwing, uh, Guccio is pretty low, he looks like he gets away. 
Stitches should also get away. Gucci Guccio needs to watch out. He shouldn't overextend in this. And next tribute uh, is up up for grabs for alternate. They can actually go for a steal on the boss as well, which is pretty huge. I mean, uh, and faculty really turning this game around. They're already two levels ahead now. Well, one level. A little bit over one level, but they will grab, get the grab on the boss since uh, three heroes for alternate are down and it's two warriors, so they can't uh, engage this uh, composition by end faculty whatsoever. Um, but the boss is pretty close to dying. They need to take him out. Alternate will try to grab it now. Ooh, the ultimate coming out of Shen. Stitch is still down. And the boss went down. Who can grab him though? Uh, yep, it went to end faculty. So uh, weren't really that much... Uh, didn't get that big of a surprise out of this. And um, alternate will have to defend the bottom fort now. But they have to port back initially. Um, right wing and Felstead got so much damage in. Or you were unable to connect to chat, reconnecting in two seconds. <laughs> um, I'll just have to watch out if the next game is already starting. Um, but I keep an eye out on that. Oh, first tribute um, might be possible for alternate to grab that. Yep, they did get it. Oh, but Guccio caught out of position. And some nice body blocking going on there. They do grab him. And Tychus was still down from that previous fight. The boss just wailed away at the wall and did take out the gates and one tower. And no one out of alternate is reacting yet. They're two levels down now. Uh, the next boss is being grabbed by Infaculty as well. Uh, that's, that's pretty huge right there. The boss will probably uh, grab the top fort. Uh, since he has support by at least four heroes. Passive is still holding middle. Um, that's a little bit dangerous right there, because in this phase of the game you shouldn't really have a player just sitting in lane, unless he has like perfect vision. So Tesla is, is a good choice to have that um, have that still going on and still push the mid lane, but um, he has to use his oracle constantly. Okay, next tribute is up for grabs. The boss just took out the top fort uh, with those heroes. And, and faculty, they're two levels ahead, they have their storm powers now. There comes the ultimate out of Valor. And doing some damage on a Nubarak, he's pretty low. Brightwing also jumps in, try to, tries to push him away. And, ooh, Tychus goes down. Felsen was pretty low in the meantime. Now it, uh, Stitches goes down as well. And, and Faculty is just on the hunt. Brightwing might be able to get away just barely. And the curse hits at the same time. This is awful for alternate, but so far only Stitches and Tychus are down, so they might still be able to hold this, but they will lose at least one keep. So one more advantage going to end faculty. Uh, with that keep gone, um, they are almost level 21, uh, meaning three levels ahead. Uh, that's pretty huge right there. And with the way they've been handling these team fights, uh, they are far, far ahead. And there we go, just hitting on the core. Right wing pretty low, they take her out as well, only Felstead left alive, and with that they should be able to kill the core. Still 11 seconds on Stitches, uh, 4 seconds on Tychus, that's more than enough for in faculty to take this first game. And there we go, taking the first game, 1-0 for end faculty. A little bit surprising there, but um, goes to show that once again these um, these sustaining compositions, these compositions that um, just have so many warriors, not that much damage output, but um, if you have Tassila in there, you can always kind of gear it uh, towards, um, uh, I don't know, you, you can always gear towards uh, more damage and uh, kind of stay more, uh, stay a little bit dynamic that way. All right, so we'll get back to real casting now with uh, hopefully having an observer spot. Yeah, just talking to a mouse player, they actually made uh, the Heroes Premier League playoffs since i 2 heart didn't uh, win over um, My Insanity. 
and they'll play in their semi-finals tomorrow. Yeah, the next game will be better. Uh, sorry about that. We won't have any lag and uh, we'll have sound and all that good jazz. So stay tuned, uh, we'll get right on it. Okay. <laughs> Alternate, Heroes of the Throw. That's not nice, Malziok. Okay, so we are in the lobby for the next game. Um, hopefully they haven't started with the picks yet, but we have the next map and it's going to be Blackheart's Bay. So um, I don't quite remember, I don't quite remember the exact bands. I think it was Haunted Mines and Garden of Terror. So of course you'll have, um, uh, you'll have um, First Hollow first. Then, Haunted, uh, then Blackheart's Bay, and if it goes to a third game, then uh, the loser of this... Uh, no, wait, actually, um, let me see. Um, so yeah, it would be... Uh, it would be and faculty that could decide on the, on the next map, and I think it would have to be Blackheart's Bay again, since they can't pick a map they want on. Um... Okay, and faculty and then this since you lost. Um, yeah, so it should. The first pick should probably go to alternate. And no, loser is second pick? That's weird. Okay. Well, the admins will figure it out. Okay, so they're doing the draft on, on another side. Give me a sec. Get that ready. Okay, should have the draft up here any second. Jeez, there we go. They're not quite ready yet. Oh yes, they are. First ban is incoming for and faculty. And it is Tassadar, and of course alternate bans Abathur once again. They know that a good. Oh no, never mind. That's. Ooh, it's alternate banning uh, Abathur. Okay. That's a little bit surprising. And and faculty going for the ban on Tassadar. Um, also surprising considering that uh, it was their pick last game. Alright, uh, so it's. I'll scroll up a little bit so you guys can see whose turn it is. Um, first pick goes to end faculty and it is Uther. So um, they handled the situation pr uh, quite well in that last map with their sustaining composition so they can go for just the same thing again if they want to. So we might see another three warrior composition out of them. But maybe team alternate has uh, something up their sleeve as well, changing things up. Uh, no picks yet. So they should be, um, ooh, Bella is a first pick. Uh, that's really interesting. That's kind of weird, to be honest. Um, Bella is usually seen as one of the last picks. If they pick her... In as the first uh, hero, that's they must have something up their sleeve. They, they must have a special idea with her. Abifer is gone. Otherwise, you could um, you could ultimate evolution her and uh, have the the double heroic 
which is uh, really strong, but I don't know. Okay, next pickup is Falstad, so they already got um, the good assassins out of the way. And two assassins, so they will go for a, um, um, for a little bit more DPS style, but also squishier. So something they um, didn't quite handle all that well in the last game, which uh, surprises me quite a bit that they would go for something like that again. Or something that's even um, even less sustainable. Okay, Stitches and Nova are picked up here for in faculty. So Stitches... Um, last game we saw the Stitches on alternate, alongside a Nubarak. They might go for a Nubarak again. Rega is banned by end faculty, which is also a little bit surprising because right now they wouldn't have um, those heroes that work that well with Rega. But I don't know. End faculty had some um, curious bans in the previous game as well, so I'm not all that surprised about them. And Tyke is being banned by alternate. Yeah, so. What really surprises me, I mean, usually you would see Tychus as the first pick, um, if you go for that assassin first pick, which does make sense. Um, not Valor, and now they um, now they ban Tychus. So it's a little bit weird. But um, the bans overall make sense, because banning Abathur and Tychus um, just uh, is, is really important, because having the clone on Tychus, double Odin, is incredibly strong. The score is currently 1-0 for Ant Faculty. I'll get that fixed for the overlay for the next game. And Chen, again being picked up by Ant Faculty. So two warriors already. Let's see what they're going for in their final pick. But first we have alternate picking the next hero I probably go for the support last um, and well it has to be Brightwing <laughs> I would assume I mean um, Falcon and Brightwing on Blackheart's Bay actually make a lot of sense they give you the mobility to just uh, switch lanes really fast um, go for the chests if they're if they're not being contested yeah and there's Brightwing I would have liked to see her as the final pick but then these guys went for so vastly different um, draft strategies that I guess it's alright to go for her right now. Okay, so final pick incoming for in faculty. Assassin or warrior? That's the question now. They want to go for the same thing they did last game or try something new? Chen, of course, the master of survivability. Or maybe maybe something totally different, like oh, it's Zeratul. Zeratul is the final pick. So, um, okay, a little bit different than last game. Two warriors, two, uh, two assassins, um, and Nubarak is the final pick for Team Alternate. That's uh, that's a good composition for alternate, but I said that in, in the first game, and um, they got uh, really stumped by end faculty uh, with their uh, with their sustained composition. At uh, this time, end faculty playing a little bit more balanced uh, mix up, and we'll have to see how team alternate deals with it. All right, almost all of the players are ready. So let's see if we can get the game started soon. Um, I'm ready. I'll take a quick bathroom break and then we'll be right back here with the second game between Alternate and Ant Faculty. Stay tuned.
Get ready for battle, ya land lovers! All right, I'm giving you ten seconds. Oh geez, they really did start right away. So let's jump into the game. Uh, on the left side... Um, well, I would assume... Yep. Uh, on the left side we have Alternate, currently down 1-0. Uh, and on the right side as the red team we have M Faculty. Oh, Alternate already grabbing the first coins here in bot lane. And Nova not really caught up the position, just putting her uh, putting her hologram down, um, keeping the watch on that chest. A couple of coins already going for alternate, and Falstead is taken out here, um, probably overextended in the mid lane. Sorry, uh, just watching those guys uh, go for uh, go for the easy camp. And we have alternate uh, rotating towards top, Brightwing. A little bit out of position there, but um, so far it's only Uther in top lane and uh, doesn't look like Witches and Nova will follow. But Alternate doing a good job just grabbing a lot, lot of coins. Check their coins. Oh, actually up to 11 already. 7 on... Um, on. Oh no, actually it's and Faculty that has, seven, uh, has 11 coins and Alternate is on 7 coins. Mixing those guys up, and now Tyrael might be in trouble. Here comes the hook out of Stitches, but a new can of course tank that, and we have Valor moving in, so they can turn this fight around. Ooh, nice body block coming out of Vassal, and the Polymorph goes down on Zaun, but looks like he can get away. Zypho is pretty low though, and Tyrael will chase after him. Hologram is being popped, and Shen moves into the fray. Ooh, Tyrael goes down, loses a couple of coins. Uther immediately goes for the pickup, and... Now I don't think they have enough coins to actually go for the turn, and nope, doesn't look like it. Um, okay, Bakery, you're just coming in. Um, I think they played quite well, but... Um, and Faculty had the better composition. Um, they didn't really use their disrupts uh, at the... I mean, they got the first tribute, so um, they did a good job initially, but then later on... They um, just overextended a little bit, and with the sustain coming out of and faculty, they couldn't deal with it. You have to play really cautiously if, if you want to survive those fights. Okay, so now alternate should have enough coins to make the turn-in happen, but no, not everyone has turned in yet. Nope, not quite yet. Five coins. Still down on five coins. And Stitch is getting here a little bit too late. Would have liked to stop that turn in. But will pay up now, and only three coins missing. Nova does keep uh, Guccio back, and yeah, getting the turn in for seven coins. Not bad. But they need a couple more to get that first barrage up and going. And Uther just doing a good job in the top lane, pushing through with the Knights. Uh, they already got a lot of damage done uh, on the towers and the gates. But now that the knights are gone, um, I think he will stay back. But it's only Brightwing up there, so um, they lost a lot of ammo. And the chests are back up. Here, Hucho, a little bit out of position. He drives the chest, takes a lot of damage though, and wow! There comes the stun out of Ufer, and they take out Felstead and steal all of his five coins. Nice pickup here for End Faculty, and they're already a level ahead. And there goes the first barrage down. Um, fort is taking damage soon, and they will grab that first fort. This is just dealing with the minions, and well, as far as experience goes, it's it's 
Almost even. Ooh, Bella's in trouble. There comes the initial hit, uh, hit by Nova. Uh, Zypho getting there a little bit too late. So not quite making that gank happen. And Shen move, already moving down to the night. And uh, looks like no one's in position except for Vala, and she probably won't be able to stop this knight capturing. Nope, Nova is keeping her back, so they will go for those knights and capture them easily. And that means more and more pressure just piling on on this bottom lane. In the top lane, uh, or mid lane rather, um, Stitch is still doing a good job. Fort is not quite gone here. Which he was able to barely keep that alive, but oh, it's gonna be pretty close. If the archer moves in there and gets maybe one or two shots off, that should be sufficient. But now Stitch is moving in and he will get for the final blow. And that means and Faculty is now in level 10 and does have um, their initial heroics up. It's gonna be Gorge on Stitches, Divine Storm Maneuver, Precision Strike on Nova, of course Storm, Earth and Fire on Shen and Zeratul. Probably going for the Void Prison, but... Um, We'll see in just a few. They're gonna pay up and will should get the second barrage, but it looks like they wanna go for another gank here. Oh, there comes the Void Prism. And they get in position. Precision strike, follow-up, good work. But there comes the stun and the gorge follow-up on stitches. Uh, unfortunately, Tyriel did get away, but grabbing an Uberak with so many coins. Um, this will allow them to probably go for the third barrage in a row. And faculty is just on fire tonight. Oh, green out getting a little bit out of position. But uh, with the shield, he was able to stay alive. He also captured the siege giants uh, just to pile that on. Barrage is going into the top fort now and will take that out. Uh, let's check how many coins they actually have. Uh, none so far? No, there they are. Okay, so. Um, it's oh, it's barely enough to get the next barrage going. That's incredible. That was the stun out of the noob, um, just trying to stop their channeling. But he needs to wait for the remainder of the team. Ooh, Shen taking uh, actually Val taking a lot of damage, and there comes the pullback. Oh, uh, that missing his shock and off, and Brightwing goes down as well. Wow, and Faculty just ruling these fights, even though they don't have that really sustaining composition. Uh, with those two assassins, they can take out um, they can take out their opponents quite handily, and um, being a level ahead, of course, helps as well. Yeah, let's see how that split is working out. Um, there two is going bot lane, and the remainder of the team will move top to defend the boss. One fort is gone, but two forts already taken out. Um, by and faculty, and they will get the bottom fort as well. Zeratu was able to port back. Uh, well, uh, they should get it with the barrage. Yes, yes, they will. And now that's time for them to take the knights. They're two levels ahead, so in a really good position. Um, yeah, bright on the chest. Uh, I think I don't know if it's actually intended behavior, but um, it does work. And uh, I don't know if Blizzard issued a statement if it's supposed to work. Um, but for now, I don't think there are any rules against it. They will grab the next chest as well, and Falstead, did he go for the grab again? It does look like it, he has 5 coins. And we have the knights pushing top lane, so Alternate will move to the top lane just to defend. And grab a couple more coins here, grabbing those, uh, grabbing those pirates. And there's the first barrage incoming for Alternate, but then Faculty, they're getting the position. They want to get into this next team fight. there's the Polymorph on green out. He needs to get out, but they they want to get that get good possession. Anubarak with the stun, and uh, Shen is pretty low. He drops his heroic. There comes a good shock and all this time uh, for alternate, and able to stun most of these heroes by end faculty. Shen is already down. Ufer is really low. He needs to stay back, and uh, so far. Alternate is handling this really well, but now Valor is gone and Tyrael is gone, so they will stay out of the fight. And just try to hold on uh, to their fort, but that's already gone. Uh, Brightwing will, will move down and they will go for another turn in. Do they have enough coins yet? Yes, they will. Uh, if Anubarak actually gets those two additional coins in. Ooh, but he's in trouble. And Faculty is getting into position. 
There's the polymorph on Uther and the pushback by Brightwing. Saves Felstead and Brightwing. And Turiel was also able to Hearthstone back into base. So, the next barrage is incoming, and ooh, a new Barak taken out. So, he was able to get those coins in, but uh, lost out um, since they did, were able to pick him up. Now they can clean up the, uh, the easy giants here. And, yeah, they should be able to grab the knights as well. Knights also incoming on Alternate's part, and then Faculty is still a level ahead, uh, still doing well on the team parts. But they will lose one of their forts again, so uh, it's gonna be even on the fort soon. Oh, those are the remaining cannibals, and the fort is still at full health. So, so far, um, and faculty still has one more fort up. It will pay up soon, and they have enough coins to make the next barrage happen. I don't think that Alternate can contest that. They need to deal with the knights and sea giants first. And that's gonna take them some time. Which allows and faculty, of course, to go for that turn and seven more coins, which is oh, just enough to get that next barrage going. And this one will hit the fort. So they have time to deal with the knights and possibly even go for the boss afterwards. Still 35 seconds left on the timer for the boss. But that's about the time they will need to deal with these knights. And right now, alternate is completely out of position, so they will have a barrage incoming and the boss incoming for end faculty, which is just a lot of pushing power. Uh, I don't know if they... yep, they have the positioning on alternate right now. They know, okay, they, t they just took out the fort. It will take them some time to go up towards that boss, but still five seconds left on the timer. Ooh, they have stone back? Okay, that's interesting. Well, they probably saw those guys were incoming, um, but they don't have any more pushing power with them. They don't have any seed shines. Um, no knights or anything, but still, um, losing that fort would be quite vital. Oh, there's the Void, uh, void Prison, and getting Brightwing in that process. Nice precision strike. Vela getting the kill on Ulfur, and the Shock and Awe doing some decent damage there on all these warriors. They um, they still have Wolf, Stitches, and Shen alive, and Tyrael is taken out. So a good fight again for End Faculty. Uh, just turning back at the exact right in time. Oh, and even getting the kill here on Anubarak, he couldn't escape in time. Uh, they don't have enough coins right now to go for the next barrage, but I think they don't even need to. They will just um, grab a couple more, grab a couple more coins in the chest. Uh, Chen is just taking the bottom chest, and then they should be fine to just continue on pressuring. It's a little bit dangerous to go alone right there, um, but looks like they want to just re-rally um, re here at the boss. And Uther and Shen are on their way as well, but at the same time Alternate is coming in and they spotted them, so they will get out of there. And they have Stitches in position, ooh, actually Zypho giving away Stitches position, uh, having that health globe fly over. So, I don't know, I don't think they saw that alternate um, went back again. But this does give them some time to go for the boss. And they have captured the watchtower, so they should know when they're coming in. Nope, they're coming now. And they're right in the middle of that boss. Stitch is still waiting though. Tyrion moves in, there's the gorge and a nice void prison. Keeping almost all of these heroes out of the fight. There comes the prison strike follow up. Oh, Anubarak moves in there. Nova's already taken out with a nice shock and awe by Guccio. Stitches also falls. Alternate making a good team fight happen here. Uh, green out is Polymorph. He should be taken out by Vela there. Yeah, final blow coming in. And Shen, uh, one of the, the only hero left alive here. But fortunately for him, Anubarak misses his stun and he still had his heroic up. So Alternate making a good comeback happen. Grabbing a lot more coins. And they could be going for another barrage. Let's check out that point score right now. Oh, 11 coins on Guccio, uh, flying over, and that's almost enough to make it happen. They just grabbed the next pirates, so they should be good to go. And it's three forts on both sides, and Guccio make it, or um, 
rather alternate making that uh, team fight turnaround happen should really help them out. They will go for a couple more bribes here, get those sea chants in the bot lane. Uh, let's check the timers on these other cams. Uh, these two are up. Looks like End Faculty is going to grab their uh, knights, and the bottom knights just respawned. So I would think that Alternate will go for the bottom knights now. Nope. At least Anubarak will return, and they're going for their own knights uh, in the top lane. And the barrage is incoming on the mid lane. Uh, we'll take out uh, at least the gates, possibly do a little bit of damage on the keep, but I don't think they got any previous damage in, so it should do all that much. And the top knights have been captured here on and faculty's part. That's a lot of minions coming in. <laughs> and the knights are there to help them out as well. Watchtower is currently in and faculty's control, but they're being a little bit stampede over right there. Alternate is uh, not in the good position though, they need to recuperate. And oh, Zahn missing his hook there. And right now, neither of these teams can actually single out uh, one hero. Ooh, Vassal actually in a little bit of trouble right there, yep. There two jumps in, but dashes out again. Oh, and a nice shock and all, but the Void Prism capturing Marcio. There comes the follow-up out of Valor, and Gluehammer is still standing in that precision strike, taking a lot of damage. There's the wave by Krolu. Nova is taken out, Chen still alive, Krolu up, up on front there. Valor is taken out, and Stitch is pretty low as well. Alternate turning this fight around again. And this does give him the time to grab those next coins. Five coins already grabbed here up top. They will go for the bottom coins as well. Yep, there comes the bribe out of Guccio. So ten more coins, that does give him enough coins to make that turn and happen. Just barely. But it is enough. And with that, the middle f middle keep will fall. And they will get some additional damage on, on these uh, top lane as well. Since the knights are already up, they will do um yeah, they will do some damage on the gates. And then Mirage will come as well. And now going for the Knights. Wow, what an impeccable timing here for Alternate. And they're almost level 20. Just one more kill somewhere. Let's check out their Storm Powers once they do get that level 20 up. Yep, the keep is gone now. The Mirage was enough. And we have Storm Shield out of Brightwing, Resurgence on Tyrael and Anub, um, Blast of Awe on Falstead, and Valor will probably go for um, Rain of Vengeance improvement. Not picked anything yet. Check out, check on her in a sec. Yeah, so and Faculty is still dealing with these knights. Now it all comes down to um, just not overextending um, in the team fights or uh, in the barrage on on the keeps. Oh, there's the shock and all coming in, and Green out instantly taken out here. They just completely ignore Shen, go straight for Zero Two. He's in trouble. The noob is on the chase. There comes the deep dive and the final blow on him as well. Nova's taken out as well, and Stitch is so incredibly low. This might actually be a team ki team kill right here and now. Oh, Holo. He's pretty low, but he did get away with Bolt of the Storm. And uh, we'll stay safe for now. Of course, uh, Shen and Stitches did have Resurgence, so they're instantly back up. Divine Hur Hurricane was picked by Uther. And no pickup on Zeratul yet. Oh, by the way, Wella did also go for Bolt of the Storm. And Sea Giants just wailing away back here. And they have a lot of coins to turn in. So, is it gonna be enough? It did look like it. Yep. They will have the next turn in as well. And with that, um, one of their keeps is in trouble. And then Faculty needs to watch out. Oh, they're gonna grab the boss as well. That's just more and more issues that and Faculty has to deal with. And they, they can't really. Um, go and surprise them at the boss right now because they need to deal with these catapults that are coming in. Now that the middle keep is gone, uh, you can never really get those, uh, let those minions reach the core. And there's the damage coming in on the keep. It's gonna take out the top keep and there's no, nope, uh, not enough shots left to go for the bottom keep. But that's just one keep left here 
or end faculty, which means double catapults in top and mid lane. And they're a level behind. Let's see if they can make a surprise happen. No, Zon misses his hook. They're, they can't fight next to the boss. They need to uh, take him out before he reaches the base. There's the ultimate out of green out and the follow-up out of Valor. You're not taking a lot of damage and Zero Tool is taken out. He wanted to go for Guccio. And there's the nice snipe here with the shotgun on Uther. And Stitch is also taken out. Nova was sniped instantly as well. And it's, again, it's only Shen that stays alive here. Um, I don't know if he popped his heroic already. No, nope, he's still... He's still fine, he can still go for that, but uh, they're just gonna ignore him, go straight for the core, 5v, 5v1, that's easy peasy, and they will get the kill here, and with that, even out the series and come back with a 1-1. Good job by Alternate making that happen. So it looks like end faculty will probably go back to their initial draft and um, try to stay on that uh, sustaining composition. Uh, having two warriors, two assassins didn't really work out for them. And I gotta give props to Gucho. Um, his shock and awes were just amazing. Um, in in all of or in this game from the beginning till the end, um, they were always sitting in the perfect spot, always getting the heroes that were quite low. And, um, and faculty not quite managing to um, dash away in time. So a good job uh, by Alternate making that comeback happen. This time we have the ban on Nova out of Alternate and a ban on Abathur by end faculty. So it's always one team going for the, uh, going for the Abathur ban. And then first pick goes to Tychus by Alternate and Tassadon Felset being picked by end faculty. And remember, we are on Dragonshire. So let's see, maybe alternate going for... Um, Uther, I was gonna say Uther once again. And Stitches. Uh, did they have Stitches last time? No, I think... And Faculty played with Stitches, right? I think it was... And, fat, and faculty on stitches and alternate had a new barack but uh, damn memory always failing me okay so next pick will be by and faculty and then we'll have bo uh, two additional bands one for each team and since, oh no, it's just one warrior, one assassin gone, so I think in faculty might go for their second assassin now. Just because uh, alternate got their warrior, out, one of their warriors out of the way. But then again, um, they kind of won out with a three warrior composition, so yep, going for their second, or going for their first warrior now. And I would expect them to um, take um, take Brightwing as their support and then go for... Well, if, if they can get a Nubarak, that would be pretty amazing. I don't know if uh, Alternate will possibly grab him first. They're up with their ban now. Or they ban him. That could work as well. Yeah, you're right, Star Lady. Those bands make a lot more sense. And they were stuck on the band screen on the other one anyway, so... Uh, three more seconds. Let's see. Who are they going to ban? Nova was already banned. That uh, would have been a viable option, but... He's gone. Uh, they banned Rainer for some reason. Um, the banning is stuck again. He got disconnected. Rainer ban is kind of weird. Um, we've seen that out of 
a PPP in a previous game before, and I'm not too sure why they even went for that ban. It looks like they are finishing the draft in, in the team lobby. Tyrion Felsen is a really nice combo. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Tyrion and uh, Nova would also be a nice combo. <laughs> Who's your boyfriend, little weird ninja? If you don't want to tell us, just tell us where um, if he's playing for alternate or in faculty. And and faculty bans Vala. So um, I think that's also the ban they put out. No, oh, actually, that was the first pick in um, in the second game. And they had a little bit of trouble um, dealing with her. So I guess it does make sense to ban her. But then again, um, Alternate could very well just go for two more warriors if they want to and play it really sustainy, like that first game. Okay, pick a noob. So this does look similar. Looks a lot like what and Faculty had on the first map. Which was also um, Tychus, Stitches, Noob, um, and I think Uther and Feltz that, but I'm not too sure. So that's um, yeah, pretty much a counter um, counter pickup by Alternate. Lotus. So we'll have a look closer eye on Lotus just for you, little weird ninja, <laughs> and see how he's doing. Green, don't say that. I know he's your teammate, but still. <laughs> Make him sleep on the couch. <laughs> Um, that would give him a lot of incentive to uh, to win this game, so uh, let's make it happen. Put out, put out a dare. All right, fellas, the next pick is coming in for end faculty, and it's Rhaegar. So um, remember, the ban was Rainer for alternate, and. Vala out of end faculty and then they picked a noob and now picking Rhaegar by end faculty. And their final hero. I I'm I have no idea who they, who they're gonna pick right there. Hmm. First we have alternate of course. And no idea for them either. I mean, both both kind of strategies worked. Uh, I mean, <laughs> rather the uh, multiple warrior strategy worked. And uh, not going for... for not going for that long-range initiation like they did in the first game. Oh, Pixagara. I like that. I throw, <laughs> so he sleeps on the couch. <laughs> well, there is um, there is Bliss money on the line, um, so for the Arcana Gaming uh, or Arcana Heroes Cup, um, they do have a hundred euros in Bliss um, Battle.net balance, so that can go into either um, Heroes for Heroes of the Storm, of course, but you can also put it into uh, new games or. Uh, Hearthstone cards, whatever you, whatever you fancy. Okay, so final pick out of alternate was was Zagara, and the final pick out of in faculty was Shen. Okay, 
So in faculty, um, going for um, a, a similar build like they did last game, having two warriors and two assassins. Well, if you want to call Tassadar an assassin. Wait, they just switch to Illidan. I don't know if Alternate will agree to that, but that's a little bit different then. Okay, so they're going for Illidan. That's DPS again, so Eraser combo coming out of End Faculty. And Alternate with Zagara, um, Anubarak, and Stitches. Uh, they have a lot of CC. I don't know if End Faculty's composition will work out here. I think this game might have already been decided in the draft, but we'll see. And End Faculty, uh, Alternate will be fine with them playing Illidan. Actually, I think they I, they would love to see uh, end faculty going for Illidan instead of Shan. <laughs> but that also means that alternate has to play it a little bit safer early on. <laughs> um. Razor, I don't know if that is the master plan. We now not gonna throw the game just to sleep sleep with Lotus on the couch. And and faculty is not in the gaming house, are they? I know alternate is, but and faculty? Guys, give Elvin Late a hand here. Um you like the slam build on stitches or devour build? And by devour, I don't know. I mean, it depends on the remainder of the team. Devour is is good if you don't have like if you go solo queue and there's no support in there or um, no real viable support, then you can go for devour build. Gives a little bit more survivability and just uh, able to you can stay in the lanes a little bit better. Um, stop banning Apple for every game. Um, and with the a slam build you are able to push better in the lanes and of course um, later on you can control the fights like Razor said. Alright, I think almost everyone is ready so we should get started here with the third and final game for tonight in the Arcana Heroes Playoffs. And it's going to be, once again, Alternate versus End Faculty. Who can make it happen? End Faculty took the first game in a surprising move. Um, able to outplay Alternate, even though they um, yeah, they had an amazing way to uh, stop the channeling on, on, on the tributes, but End Faculty made the turnaround happen by um, yeah, just staying alive, um, surviving the first onslaught um, with a curse, and then coming back and just winning the team fights over and over and um, getting nice timings again on the camps. I think that's one of the most crucial aspects. You want to kill the, or um, at least um, weaken the opposing team when the timers are bowed up on their camps and then you go ahead and steal them. Alright, so let's get started here. On the left side, here on Dragonshire, we have our blue team and it is Alternate. They have Anubarak, Zagara, Uther, Stitches, and Tychus. Their opponents on the right side of the map. In the red, we have Ant Faculty, and they have Tyrael, Tassadar, Illidan, Rhaegar, and Fatstad. Alright, let's keep a close eye here on Alternate. They're moving together as a team. Maybe looking to get uh, the initial gank here. Oh, but of course, you don't go out on, on Tassadar. He has the Oracle. And even a preemptive storm. Ah, Mops, you're missing his hook there. And now we will see a redistribution in these lanes. It just looks like he wants to go top, and Anubarak taking the middle lane. Um, I think Zergara will probably stay bot lane. She started out uh, with her creep spread already. And, yeah. Uther and Tychus will probably go uh, go along and rotate lanes, be the gang squad, or alternate. 
The ancient shrines awaken. Control them and let loose the Dragon Knight. Wrong screen. Oh, I think I'm on the right screen now. Should be at least. By the way, read the reasoning um, by Cyberban on Abathur. Uh, I don't agree with the Asmodan uh, reasoning, but I think other than that, it makes a lot of sense. You don't want Abathur. You don't want to face Abathur Tychus. Oh, amazing hook coming out of Mopsio, but he doesn't have a follow-up, of course, and Green Out will go again for that shrine. There's still 3v3 fighting going on in the bot lane. Uh, no, never mind. Where's the third, third player? Oh, we have Tyrael um, going and rotating towards top lane, contesting stitches, but oh, they're doing an amazing job pushing down here. Tower's already out of ammo, the gate is almost down as well. And, um, yeah, they have complete control over the shrine down here. And that's why I love Zagera um, on Dragonshire, because you can always keep control in her lane. You just have to play a little bit more cautiously early on. But once that creep is up, I mean, they're not going to lose control all too soon. Tyrael will rotate down here as well. But, uh, yeah, they don't have that... Uh, they don't have any good idea to uh, get started here. And Stitches might be able to get pick up here again. Oh, green out pretty low already. Looks like Stitches will get the grab on that top shrine. Nuberak is in position, but Tassel, of course, with the long range disrupt uh, with the storm, it's gonna be able to stop the noob. Maybe with Tychus in there. Ooh, yeah, that's a good job so far. There's the shield coming in and the disrupt, of course, coming out of Holo. And again, good disrupt timing. And Stitches is taken out, and with that, once again, and faculty in control of the top shrine. But the bottom shrine is, of course, in a firm control by um, by alternate. And they're gonna leave lanes now. Go for the easy cam. Will they take that out in no time? And Stitches is back, rotating towards top. I don't know why exactly and faculty is not going for the bottom shrine. Maybe they didn't realize. Maybe they knew, okay, with all that creep there, um, I would get surprised if I wanted to uh, take that shrine. And Zagara and, well, almost the entire team out of alternate is back down here. Still have solid control. They took the easy camp uh, down in bot lane and now will go for additional, additional giants here. Grab the bot camp as well. Stitches still can't seem to get control in the top lane, but uh, he's facing off against Rega and Nova, so uh, that's or, um, rather uh, Illidan there. He, he does look like Nova a little bit with that uh, with that yellow hair. But yeah, I mean, he's he's doing a good job, he just needs to stay alive, and as long as they keep pushing down the spot lane, it doesn't really matter all that much that they don't have the shrine control. But a little bit behind in levels, we'll catch up now, but half the level uh, advantage right there for and faculty. But they're close, pretty close to losing this fort, which is actually kind of a big deal. And with that, Alternate will move out of here. But we'll still keep firm grasp on that shrine down there. They can't lose this shrine, otherwise uh, it's gonna be tough for them to um, yeah, to defend the Dragon Knight. Uh, they wanna keep on piling the pressure here in the bot lane. And in fact, not really sure what they're gonna do here. Oh, there's a gank attempt up on Zahn, but nope, he's just buying himself a little bit of time. There comes to the disrupt and Felt's it also in position to disrupt the channeling. And he's gonna fly top just to recapture that shrine. Rhaegar already in position and Illidan as well. So, and faculty still doing a good job just keeping that shrine alive. And Tyrion went down there. So alternate um, really wanted to uh, go for the Dragon Knight, but alas, um, they lost their top shrine, so not gonna happen.
And now it's only Illidan versus Stitches. Maybe he can finally go for that kill, or go for that, um, go for that chop shrine. Nope, Rega has rejoined. But they're gonna rotate back down. And the fort uh, did lose a little bit of ammo already. Oh no. That's, that's pretty daring. You shouldn't go down there. But he really wants to go for that shrine. Now that we have three players out of end faculty in the mid. For the first time contesting this, uh, this dragon shrine uh, position right there. And Stitch is even moving out of lane. Maybe, uh, maybe Alternate thought they could go for a gank here with Stitches in position, but right now it's still a little bit, uh, yeah, it's still a little bit of back and forth. There comes the hook and the gorge. Good job by Mopsio, and just blurps him out here behind enemy lines and should get the kill. But there comes the ancestral healing. The Nubarak moves in. They will go for a body block, and the entire team just moving in on green out, being caught completely out of position. I don't think uh, he realized that um, it was about time to have that gorge up. They did sacrifice their positioning on, on uh, the shrines, so the bottom shrine was lost. Odin form was popped, had to be popped here by Gluehammer, and uh, looks like he can keep control of that shrine. Oh, shock and all barely missing. They will go for the capture there, but this does give a little bit of an opportunity to end faculty if they want to go for the capture on the Dragon Knight. Which we're dealing with those yeah, easy with that easy cam. But felt that he wanted to go and get in position, grab the Dragon Knight. But not gonna happen. There comes the Maw. Vassal already in position to body block. And yeah, they're gonna get the kill here. So Felstead is out of the game for a little bit, and yeah, it's only Rega and Tyrion in the mid lane, and Uther will be able to stop him for a little while longer. Meanwhile, the bottom shrine has been captured. The light shines on us all. And top lane is now also pushing with a couple of knights. Like Stitches might be able to grab the grab the top shrine. Nope, Greenup moves in and Illidan is on his back, so uh, that's gonna work wonders here on Stitches. But Uther is moving in, maybe they can make something happen here. There comes the stun, but Ancestral Healing coming in instantly here on Lotus. And maybe he can make something happen on Uther, but no, he gets away. Hook barely misses Lotus, but they have to give up on this top shrine. Bottom shrine is still in firm control. Or alternate and this game pretty even right there um, one four down on end faculty side but they haven't given up on the shrines yet always keeping one shrine in control uh, let's see what Zagara is gonna do now um, now that bot lane is gone she's probably gonna switch um, looks like she's rotating, rotating towards mid they already have three heroes in position down here that of course sacrifices their position on the bottom shrine so they need to make sacrifices. Ooh, that's a little bit dangerous, trying to get the steel on the easy camp. But right now they do have their giants walking down the bot lane. So and faculty will have to deal with that. And that gives them a little bit of an opportunity. Top Shrine meanwhile still contested. And being grabbed again for end faculty. And now, will we see that steal on the Seed Shines? They have a little bit of an opportunity. Ooh, Felstead is so low. Anuk moves in with the deep dive. And there comes the stun and the shot follow up. Ooh, Hollow also on out of position. And grabbing the kill on him as well. The Odin form just popped and will be a little bit of damage on these gates. Meanwhile, Zagara will grab that easy camp. So they're gonna pile on a little bit of damage here, push down this bottom lane. Uh, the gate is almost gone already, but they also took a lot of damage, so they will get out of there. Rotating back again, and Zaun is in a little bit of trouble, but of course he does have that um, blink ability to get away. Yeah, so finally um, Alternate was able to capitalize on their advance here down in the bot lane and uh, get a good gank in on Felstad and then follow that up by taking Tassada out and doing a little bit of damage there on the gates next to the keep. And now it's finally time to um, capitalize even more by grabbing the Dragon Knight. Vassal is in position. Illidan is not gonna get there to stop it. Oh, man. That was pretty close actually. He could have uh, he could have jumped in, popped his heroic if he wanted to. Um, I don't know. 
would have been would have been really close. Uh, he might have been able to make it happen, but then he would lose the next team fight, and it's happening right away. But one of them already kicked out. There comes the Maw down on Zahn, and they're already getting in a good position. They ancestral healing popped preemptively, and Shaken are missing a little bit there and kicking back on Illidan, com taking him completely out of this fight. But so far, and Faculty making a good stand here. Vassal still in the Dragonite. But and Faculty is still um, on good, pretty good uh, HP. Tyrrell, the only one that's uh, that's a little bit lower there, and Zypho now as well. But they're returning back to the lanes. Uh, they knew, okay, we have the Dragon Knight. Um, we have the Dragon Knight under control, and Vassal pops out of there, and with a deep dive, he does get away. There comes the stun though, and Tyr is in trouble. Follow up stun is also popped, and they do take him out of the fight. But then the Tyrrell bomb takes a lot of damage, or actually makes a lot of damage happen here on three heroes. And they will take out this fort. Um, only Tyrrell down right now, but uh, it's a little bit risky to go for the knights right away. They have a couple of heroes in position already, but of course with Tyrael missing, they miss their initiation ability. Um, they, of course they still uh, have uh, Felsa to try that, but I think Illidan is just way too vital for an in faculty to try to uh, get a team fight going. Uh, so I, I guess that made sense, and they might be able to steal the easy cam. Felsa is going for it, and did he grab right? Yes he did. I can hear those coins. Flinging in the mercenaries. <laughs> Preemptive stun coming out of follow, but no one's there. And we're gonna see the push on the top lane by alternate. Dishing up the damage, and I think they have enough here um, to actually take on this board. Knights are moving in as well. Ooh, there comes the long range initiation, and Shock and are not quite hitting as well as they could. Vega needs to get away. Everyone by end faculty on the same spot. They need to watch out for the Maw. Interior is already taken out. There comes the Maw and gets Tassada. Lotus does pop his ultimate. Tries to get on top of Vassal. He's taken a lot of damage, but false that almost taken out. And now Lotus is the only one left alive. He needs to get back to safety. But the top four is gone. Long gone. Alternate. Wow. Taking out three forts already, um, team ki team fights going their way, two levels ahead, almost three levels ahead, um, and they will probably have the time to take out another fort or a keep rather here in the top lane. With the knights still up, two of the knights still up, two heroes still um, full health, almost full health, they should be able to take out the keep. Nope, they want to play it safe. Uh, yeah, a couple of Siege Giants were captured here in the meantime. I think, yeah, that, those were the ones that uh, faults that bribe. So that's actually a nice opportunity for uh, Brian Faculty to try to come back in this game, because otherwise they would have lost the keep right there. But this forced, this forced Alternate to react to it. But they did have the time to go for a Dragon Knight once again. And with that, they're gonna try another push here on the bot lane. The gate, mind you, was already gone. One tower taken out, second tower will go down instantly. And let's see if they can make something happen. Alternate needs to focus on Tyrael. Once Tyrael is gone, there's really no way for uh, a faculty to engage into this. And he's already taking a lot of damage. There comes the hook on Zypho and the Gorge coming in. Gonna take Zypho out. Uh, nice body blocking coming in. And there's the follow-up stun. Ancestry coming a little bit too late. And the kick on Tassila. So he's completely out of this fight. And they're gonna focus down the keep. Probably not gonna go for the kill on the core right now. They need to get out Tyrael. If, if they get out Tyrael, they could go for a kill. Or could at least try. I mean, they're three levels ahead right there. And they have their storm powers up, so they can they can just risk it. They probably have uh, resurgence of the storm twice. Ooh, they're taking a lot of damage right there, and Tesla just on top of everything. Wow! But the mob taking out two players out of end faculty. There comes the heroic. They take out the Odin form, but they still dish out the damage. Core is down to eight percent, five percent, three percent, two percent. Wow! And Gluehammer and Vassal still had a little bit of HP left. Nice game, alternate.
takes it and moves on to the final of the Arcana Heroes Cup, an amazing final game. That was a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah. Whew, what a solid game by them. And faculty, I mean, they looked so strong in the first game, and then just alternate ripping them apart in game two and three. Um, always, in the third game, I mean, they, they, were, they were always two levels ahead after level 10. 